And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Bay Piausaurus, which was a request from Tyrant King via our Patreon and Discord. So thank you. Bay Piausaurus was a therizinosauroid theropod that lived in the early Cretaceous in what is now Liaoning, China. It was found in the Yixian Formation. And it looked pretty stocky. It had these big hands and claws and a long tail, and it walked on two legs. Claw-wise, though, it's not its not like Therizinosaurus. It's... Well, that is hard to beat, yes. <laughs> but since it's a Therizinosauroid, maybe you already know, it was an herbivore. Oh, it did also have a shorter neck than other Therizinosaurs. But they already had a pretty short neck, I feel like. Oh, some of them were some sort of, of up were, there. Yeah. Bapiosaurus, the feet had three toes, which is different from other more advanced therizinosaurs that had four toes. I didn't realize some <laughs> therizinosaurs had four toes. Just another thing to make them weird. <laughs> yeah, they're weird dinosaurs. Oh, and its inner toes were smaller. Bapiosaurus was estimated to be about 7.2 feet or 2.2 meters long and weigh 99 to 201 pounds or 45 to 91 kilograms. This is a little guy. Yeah, a little weirdo. <laughs> It had brownish feathers that probably covered its body, and it's one of the largest known dinosaurs with evidence of feathers. It was, I should note, found before Euteranus was found. Gotcha. Oh, that's really cool. I I remember people have asked us if Therizinosaurus had feathers, and I didn't know, but if this ancestor to Therizinosaurus, mm-hmm. or potential ancestor, at least somewhere in that ballpark, has feathers, that's a good sign that maybe some of the bigger, later Therizinosaurus did too. True. Although, we already mentioned that this one had some differences, like the toes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the fossils for Bay Piausaurus were found in 1996 by Li Yinxiang, a local farmer, who found a partial skeleton in Sehutun, Liaoning. And it was, then it was described in 1999 by Xu Xing and others. The type species is Bapiosaurus inexpectus. And the genus name means Bapiao lizard. That's after the city near where it was found. And the species name means unexpected and refers to its surprising features. <laughs> now, the holotype includes a partial skeleton of a subadult, uh, parts of the skull with the teeth, it's also some vertebrae, ribs, pygo style, chevrons. Four limbs, uh, incomplete pubis, femur, tibia, metatarsals, skin impressions, and more. So it's got a lot of incomplete bones, but so many of them that it sounds like we got a pretty good idea about some of its details. Mm-hmm. It also explains why it's so small, potentially, if it's a subadult. Yes, true. Now, the quarry where the fossils were found, they were re-excavated later, and then even more fossils were found. That includes the pelvic girdle and caudal vertebrae. A second specimen was described by Xuxing and others in 2009, and that one's a partial skeleton. They had preserved feathers and also a complete skull, a sclerotic ring. Oh, wow. Yeah. The, the bones and the eye. Yeah. <laughs> That's impressive. The mandible, vertebrae, humerus, metacarpals, and more, though the back of the skull for that one was badly crushed. And then in 2014, Lee and others mentioned a third specimen that was a partial skeleton, also with a badly crushed skull, but it had most of the vertebral column, arms, and more, as well as traces of feathers around the neck. Wow. Yeah, lots of evidence of feathers then. Mm Mm-hmm. Bapiosaurus had a relatively large head compared to other therizinosaurs, and its lower jaw was about the same length as its femur. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's got a big weird horse head. Yeah. The pyga style had five fused vertebrae, it's the tail. Yeah, the little tiny miniature tail. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize they were dinosaurs had pyga styles too. That's Usually you see that on birds, not so much on dinosaurs, not even dinosaurs. True, although I can't remember now about Therizinosaurus' tail. It also looks like Bapiosaurus has a normal tail before the pyga style, so just like the tip of it is fused to give it... I would assume, I'm surprised, the paleo art I'm looking at doesn't show a fan of feathers, but usually that's what they show when there's a pygostyle style, because that's what modern birds do, at least. Could be because of the feather impressions. We might know a little bit. The tail is still kind of long. It had more than 30 caudal vertebrae. Now, according to Lindsay Zano, Bapiosaurus had unique characteristics, including the last four dorsal vertebrae, the spine, they're fused, And from at least the seventh vertebra to the tail vertebrae that's fused into the pyga style. The skull is also large and about as long as the thigh bone, as you mentioned. So with all the weird characteristics. Mm -hmm. The claw bone on the 
third digit of its finger is the longest one, and that's also different from other therizinosaurs where the second digit claw is the longest. Yeah, that's really weird. That's like having a ring finger that's longer than your middle finger, kind of. Mm Mm-hmm. In 2021, last year, Liao Chunchu and others analyzed the skeleton of Baypiosaurus and included additional vertebrae that hadn't been described before. That's where we get the tail had more than 30 caudal vertebrae. There were also neural spines near the front of the tail. They found three possible synapomorphies, which is a characteristic from an ancestor that's shared by its descendants. This is for Therizinosauroidea and Therizinosauridae. And that includes having a straight ulna, the arm bone, which is straight in most Therizinosaurs, but bowed in Falcarius, a Therizinosauroid. Now, most of the body for Baypiosaurus is covered in downy, feather-like fibers. It had a secondary coat of longer, more simple feathers. Those are known as elongated, broad filamentous feathers, EBFFs. (laughs) And those rose up from the downy feathers. The tail was also covered in feathers. A 2003 study defined feathers and said that Baypiosaurus didn't have true feathers, but filaments that were related to feathers. Yeah, that's a, that back to that debate of what makes a feather a feather. Mm-hmm. Some people would just call it like a type 1 or a type 2, or some people call it proto-feather. They're calling it not a true feather. <laughs> yep. Bay Piosaurus didn't fly, so the feathers might have been for display or to attract mates. Or for warmth. Maybe. They're downy. In 2009, Xu Xing and others reported on the new feather type that was found along the skull, neck, trunk, and the forelimbs of Baypiosaurus, and they found short, slender filamentous feathers and elongated, broad filamentous feathers, those EBFFs. And those EBFFs were single, unbranched filaments. So Baypiosaurus did not use its feathers for thermal regulation, and that's based on the distribution of the feathers and morphology, so it wasn't Uh, using it to keep warm. It's not covering the warm bits. Yeah. Well... They were longer than normal filamentous feathers, and they're stiff and probably hollow, at least at the base, too. Gotcha. So not useful for warming. Mm Mm-hmm. These EBFFs were about 4 to 6 inches or 10 to 15 centimeters long, and they were broad. They're up to 0.1 inches or 0.3 centimeters wide. They're also only on parts of the head, neck, tail, and body, where modern birds typically have display structures, so that's why they're thinking they're probably used for display. Now, EBFFs have also been found in the Therizinosaur Gianchangosaurus, and it may show that they were for display and were common in early Therizinosaurs. Now, based on filaments that were found on Baypiosaurus, Cetacosaurus, and some pterosaurs, it could mean that the common ancestor for them had early feathers. These first feathers may have appeared in the Middle Triassic around 235 million years ago. In 2018, Maria McNamara and others found fossilized skin flakes on Baypiosaurus, as well as Cyanornithosaurus, Microraptor, and Confuciusornis, and they looked similar to modern birds. Never thought about bird skin flakes before. Yeah. They found corneocytes, these cells full of keratin, and compared them to birds, and they found similar cell structures, but the fossil dinosaur corneocytes were more densely packed with keratin and lacked fat or lipids, and that could mean that Baypiosaurus didn't get as warm as modern birds. Now, modern birds, they have this fatty corneocytes with loosely packed keratin so they can cool down quickly when they're flying, and Baypiosaurus probably didn't get as warm because it couldn't fly, so it didn't need to cool down as quickly. They also found that they, meaning Baypiosaurus, Microraptor Confuciusaurus, and Cynornithosaurus probably shed skin as dandruff. Baypiosaurus is a sister taxon to Falcarius, and Baypiosaurus lived in a warm, humid climate with dry seasons. The average temperatures were about 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. Baypiosaurus lived alongside Gianchungosaurus, which may mean that Therizinosaurus commonly coexisted and just had different feeding strategies so they could get along. Other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place include Delong, Euteranus, Cynornithosaurus, Cotopteryx, Confuciusornis, Cetacosaurus, and Dongbei Titan. And other animals that lived around the same time and place included snails, slugs, shrimp, insects, fish, birds, mammals, and lizards. So pretty diverse. 
For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left.